Now on BBC Two, Town Hall continues its insider's look at the day-to-day -day work of the London Borough of Lewisham. This week there's fierce debate over a controversial proposal. In Lewisham, the Education Department has made big cuts. Now it's the turn of social services. They're wonderful. I, I, I don't know why they want to do away with them, what we're doing. They had hoped to make savings through their policy review. But last week, we saw how sharp differences between council members and officers meant this hasn't happened yet. To which you have to respond. It is still also about social isolation too. Chairman Clive Jordan, in an attempt to lessen cuts to frontline services, came up with a radical idea. Is that I want to recommend um, that we reduce from the equivalent of, of one director plus five assistant director posts to, to a director plus two assistant director posts. There's no doubt in my mind, or indeed in the mind of the assistant directors who I work with, that it is possible to make cuts in the senior management of the department. The extent that Clive has suggested, going to one director and two assistant directors, and the timing which I think he's implying, is totally unacceptable in terms of running of the department in the future. And I have to say to you formally that it would be of my advice to you, and would have to be my advice to any social services committee, that that level in that time scale was unworkable. The actual volume of work and volume of contact at a very senior level make that extremely small group of people um, impossible to, to actually manage such a large department. I'm so concerned about that happening as a result of this suggestion in this time scale that I would have to make the point in every possible forum if it's your decision to do that tonight. Uh, but uh, I, I generally have to go. Yes, there's a sort of a problem here with the timing just to, to reduce to, to one and two from a cuts-led initiative might just make the review seem to be a mockery to the staff who've done it and also the credibility in the department. Can we not just agree we definitely are going to cut the AD structure? Can that just come out of the policy review in the next week or two so that at least it's based on something substantial? We have to start convincing the leadership group mm -hmm. in... Um, 22 and a half hours that we are not going to overspend next year. Possibilities of savings through the policy review are something around the order of 3.6 to 4 million pound next year. The most we're likely to be asked to find in the course of next year is 2 million pound. I have never ever yet once seen a senior manager in this authority putting their own job up except one occasion in housing. I find it hard to accept at this moment in time that that policy review would have came up with um, senior management jobs going. I think the policy review would have came up with just pretty much more of the same. Why the directorate didn't come up with this? Why the, it's the chair of the committee? It's left to the chair of committee to come up with this, rather than that management team to say, this is one of the options that you could look at. Mm. If this Labour group tonight accepts a director and two ADs, I think Clive's hand is strengthened when it goes into any leadership budget discussions. Because putting up something so radical, I think, well, does strengthen your hand with other members. There is no doubt about it. And I think we would be, as a committee, be in a good position to go back to the full council and say that there maybe has to be a rethink about social services budget, simply because that you were willing to take on board decisions like this. I think that would strengthen Clive's hand. I think the proposal about one and two, if Clive has came about with that, I'm willing to back that. I'm willing to back that and make that the base for the review. It gives the review something it's going to come back with. It's got, if it's, it's got one director and two assistant directors and it will base its proposals and its paper around that management structure and it will come back with that rather than saying, you know, leave it something vague because I think the review will now come up with something pretty radical itself given the fact that Clive's um, announced this tonight. Thank you, Chair. Can I two points? Can, can I just oh, yeah, sorry, yes. uh, Thank you, James, for that. Uh, Ryan, I'm you have to go. Do you want to make a... Yes, if I could say a, a, a half a second. I think it's too precipitate 
Um, th there's, uh, I think we ought to wait that little while longer for the policy review and, and to get it fitted in the back, because I think there is a big danger in the department falling into chaos. For the next paper, I want to argue against the crossroads cuts, please. <laughs> I'll, 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 I will join you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to go through the next weeks and months and months just making all the, all the job we do is to keep cut service to the front line, whilst at the same time we keep saying now is not quite the right moment to tackle big money like 165,000 area of saving. And, and I'm not actually prepared to take those savage cuts without being seen to do something about that. What uh, the chair is suggesting is that the new shape of the department will be one director and two assistant directors. That is a proposal before you tonight. I will now ask you for your indications, please, whether you accept that recommendation or not. Can I have people who will show that they agree with that recommendation, please? Will you raise your hands? You have four people for, and those against? That recommendation is carried. The government has launched City Challenge, its new scheme to regenerate the inner cities. The Environment Secretary, Michael Heseltine, is putting in £75 million and 15 local authorities have been invited to compete for grants. Well, it's a bit garish. Mm -hmm. yes, That's okay. Actually, I quite like that, but this mm -hmm. is a bit garish. The water thing is he's undoubtedly into. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's but he's also into future. Yeah. Into, you know, the, in, into the... You know this thing in the Manchester speech about, you know, in the past, the big mistake was pouring millions of public money into dying and outdated industries. And the future lies in, you know, sort of the innovative... The, 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 you know, the new technology, the, 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 the city, the Docklands, uh, service industries. One of the things he said in his Manchester speech was, that in the past, if you just did the people thing, people who succeed through training, then move out. Right. Shall I start because I asked for the meeting? Yes. Well, why I asked for the meeting was because I um, heard about the um, Social Services Labour Group meeting last week, and I agree with Clive's objectives, which are basically to reduce the um, senior management structure in the organisation. Uh, I agree with that, I agree with that, uh, but I was unhappy about the way it was being done. And I thought we ought to have a meeting with Clive to see if there was a way in which we could um, achieve Clive's objectives without the fallout which I felt was um, likely to occur as a result of doing it that way. Um, that was Clive feels that I've actually uh, spoken to other people, given off messages. All I've done is spoken and spoken to Bob Joy about it. And I've also just spoken briefly to tell you anything about it uh, yesterday because I heard he was at the meeting the, the ideas. But basically, I, I, you know, I, I, I think it's just simply a question of uh, um, talking about the process for actually achieving what uh, Clive wants to achieve. We can't, like in our position, or not our remit, we like to overrule or undermine or reverse the decision. What I was concerned about was that members were asking me questions which I couldn't answer. No one's asked me, and <laughs> no one seems to think, oh, well, that's why you're here. apart from Clive, I mean, this is the useful purpose of this meeting, to find out exactly what the position is, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, in general, um, I mean, I think people who want to, I'm quite happy to, you know, to, to brief everyone and, and, and talk about it. Um, Explain to us why. Well, it might just sound like a, it's an inquisition or anything, but why you've done it the way you've done it rather than doing it the way that you would normally do it? Um, how would I normally do it? Sorry, but um, what's. Well, I think we would actually, actually normally, what would happen is that uh, you'd actually get um, um, ask the officer to do a review of senior management structure and ask for an options paper on that. And then when you've actually got that, you might actually have a meeting with the Labour group uh, privately to take their views on it. And then when you've got their agreement on it, then you might tell the director that's the option we're going for. It's more, I want to really think if we'd done it another way, we wouldn't have actually had the flack that we've actually got, unless you think there was no other way of doing it. I mean, to some extent, that's, 
that's not very different from the process that's actually been through. The policy review has been a headache, but the policy review has come up with the conclusion. Um, I mean, one of the things... Can you switch those off? I'm sorry. I think he's the one in the, the pro grey suit. Yeah, that's right. You don't need any money if you're doing this sort of thing. Oh. Steve, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to Sorry. see you. Hi. Hi. Hello, Terry. Hi. Very good to see you. Good. Good. You, you found it from asset sale. It's wonderful. <laughs> Very smart. It's the second day of opening. So I gather. Yes. Thank you. Should have brought our sewing trunks. Are you in? Basically, it's the area which is north of the main London-Dover route, the A2, New Cross Road. This area is basically uh, three wards, uh, about 28,000 people. And then we've got a finger coming down the line of the proposed Dockland Light Railway extension from the Isle of Dogs down to Lewisham Town Centre. It's a complex area with three very large estates, the Peeps Estate, the Evening Estate, the Milton Court Estate. The Milton Court Estate is where the, the London City Action Team has been working with us and with uh, Task Force and with Safer Cities um, to try and you know, transform that estate. Deptford High Street is, as you will see, sort of classical inner city high street with lots of little shops, but it really is run down. And although we've been trying to turn it around, we think City Challenge will make the difference. Minister, the fundamental thing about Deptford is that it's actually Lewisham's inner city. Afro-Caribbean population, 21% compared with 13% across the whole borough. So all the incidents uh, that one reads around the inner city concentrated in Deptford. And for us, we believe that uh, local people clearly have a part to play in the regeneration process. And what we need to do is to find community solutions to community problems. We want to know what impacts on the lives of people who live in situations like this, what experiences they have and what solutions they want to put forward to the city challenge situation. We want to look at the youngsters and the unemployed who fall outside of this kind of training in initiative because they have low numeracy and literacy level and low skill base. One of the main things about uh, young people who are unemployed and fall outside of this kind of training and enterprise uh, initiative is that invariably they've never worked since they've left school. They have low motivation levels. They don't have a sense of how to behave responsibly at work or how to uh, uh, develop working relationships. If you ask them to come early for work, you're actually imposing on their time. And in some cases where a supervisor tries to give helpful uh, suggestions, they see it as criticisms. Thank you. We're also trying to address this major crime issue in terms of business security. The rate of crime just around here on the high street, as you'll see in the next few minutes, is four times the national average. It provides a major disincentive for private sector involvement. The businesses that are there are typically underinsured and therefore marginal uh, in, in their ability to trade effectively. We could see things happening across the river in docklands. Was it going to spread across? Were we going to be able to actually lift Deptford up? We have been trying to do that. We've had some successes. You're sitting in one of them this morning. But we all know what's been happening with the economy for the last year, 18 months. And we have a number of opportunities which are now in real danger of being stalled. Um, I'm sure the Secretary of State uh, would wish to see the leader of the council making the presentation uh, next time round with the support of officers. Uh, because uh, we are looking for leadership uh, in this uh, exercise and I hope that that's uh, what you'll be doing. We also, of course, are conscious of the need for partnership within the borough at political level and so uh, I have to say that this is one of the few uh, of the bidding processes I've been to which has not included opposition party representatives. Uh, I want to know what the opposition parties think uh, because this doesn't let you off the hook uh, I want to know why you haven't been doing this over the past 25 years. We have a difficulty with minority groups in that they are actually extremely tiny in Lewisham mm. and 
that, that I think makes it difficult for us to establish a working relationship because they're, they're not terribly visible. But that's, yes, um, but you see, if it, was a, if it was a minority community in any other sense, you'd probably say, but of course we must uh, make sure they're not excluded. My door is always open. Ah. Uh, I know of the midnight oil which has been burnt uh, in preparing this bid. I'm therefore in no doubt of your commitment to a bright new future. Um, thank you too for the welcome that I received uh, down in Evelyn Street on the way in this morning and that wonderful bridge with its three foot high letters saying Tories out now, <laughs> uh, which was a great start to your bid. And I suggest you have it painted out before the Secretary of State comes down next week. <laughs> in the shop there is extremely good. The market documents yeah. this area. And there are a number of key sites. The one just over that wallish one that would also be... What happens when it's open? In fact, it's a very historic ramp. You can see the slope, right? Uh, the carriages, uh, horse-drawn carriages, used to go up this ramp onto the station in the 18, yeah. 1850s, and people would uh, get onto the train and then they'd come back. It's very run down. Is the church in use? Developing. Yes, that's it. Yeah, it is. Right. In fact, we'll, we'll walk up to we'll the we'll 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 Very yeah. vibrant. Yeah. 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 That's, a, that's a nice, uh, nice mural. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It provides. There are several of those. Morning. Uh, could you help yourself to uh, have me with a just with a... Yeah, well, you'll have to ask the council leader. <laughs> there he is. Oh, sorry, bloody hell. How many, how many, how many leaders? I've just asked you, then. I never... Oh, help yourself one pound. I never please. carry any money. Oh, oh you never do. Nobody got no sunshine in your air. <laughs> Go on, this is only for the can of beer. That's all I asked you, eh? Yeah? That was all. It was for the can of beer. Not this. God bless you. Hey, and all the big knobs are gone, hey? Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Good We've had a very difficult job actually deciding how to make the presentation to you. And what we've done is we've asked six representatives of our partners um, to say a little about how they view this bid. I have been living and working for the last 20 years in Lewisham. They have piloted and initiated a number of projects uh, and have been able uh, people from the ethnic minority to begin to climb the ladder. And so City Challenge would help to develop the educational training needs of young people, especially young black and Asian women. What is the, in the area concerned, the 28, I think, thousand community, what is the present uh, housing mix in terms of public private sector? Right. Um, the increase in owner occupation is from 7% to 14% um, over in the, the last three years. Uh, over the last three years? Over the last three years. What is the target within the period of the city challenge? Um, the, the, well, the, 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 the Fairview development that uh, the gentleman from Fairview has already mentioned uh, may well bring in around 400 new homes, I think. Um, we're, yes. Yes. Um, the initiative around Goldsmith College is looking at another 500 units or so. Um, Julian Stanier, I think, <laughs> may be able to help you on other development around the New Cross Road, which again is likely to be private sector. Uh, so so what could that do to the percentages? Um, that would increase the proportion to around 20%. This is against a national average of around 70%. <coughs> Secretary of State, um, I wouldn't like you to get the impression that we're, the council are not keen to, change, to radically uh, diversify the tenure in Deptford over the next five years. We are keen to do that. 
uh, it seems uh, to us absolutely fundamental that if you're going to keep communities together, you must offer choice to young people who've achieved the jobs, who've achieved the training, who've achieved the skills that uh, you're talking about in City Challenge. They will want to do what all other people like them tend to want to do, is to own their own homes. And if they have, if the moment that uh, one has made a success of their personal life in terms of getting them on the ladder in the language we've been talking about, they then say, well, now we want the next uh, obvious benefit of being on that ladder, which is a home to own, they leave. And so we mustn't end up in a situation where all the success tends to leave the community. We are grateful for all the work you've put into it. We will be in touch with you as soon as we're able to reach decisions. Right. Thank you very thanks. much indeed. Thank you. Are you going to break into the Find out for Madeline what's going on. <laughs> Last time at the um, social services level group, I may have made a mistake. Uh, the decision that was taken at that meeting was that um, that there would be a director plus two assistant directors in the social services, the, a reorganisation of senior management within social services. Um, after that debate, it was. That decision was put to a vote, yes. which was, I mean, unusual in itself. Yes. Any dis any um, items being put to the vote in this Labour group, right. but that item was put to the vote, and the vote was it was important. You are correct in in the decision that was taken that evening on a vote, which I think was four four two. I think. I'm getting the um, feeling that I'm getting hung up to dry chair, and I'm really feeling rather uncomfortable by it. As far as I was concerned, this is not the paper that was in instructed, as it were, for the director to go away and bring back. What the director was instructed to do by that Labour group on a vote was to bring back a paper that said how you would operate Lewisham Social Services with one director and two assistant directors. What we've got here is a full range of options that's being separately discussed at the policy review. Now, if, if you get told to do something. If your gaffer says to you, go and do such and such, you may not like it, but you go away and you do it. And you come back and you say, this is how you do it. This is how it would work. He's done but that. What you've got to do is you've got to, you've got to qualify it by saying that it would be difficult here, it would be difficult there, and you may not be able to deliver what you want to do at the end of the day. So be it. But that's maybe the way you couch it. But you don't come back and say on the first recommendation it's not possible, and then go in to say how it would be possible in all the other ways that would be... I mean, all due respect to yourself, John, it's, it's your game, you're the director of social services, and it's, this is what you're about. And if you and your team thought that one plus three was going to be the way to go ahead, or the way to... The, the, the least worst scenario that you could get away with as far as members was concerned, then more power to you. More power to you. But, but you the, wouldn't the, want me to lie to you, would you? What? You wouldn't want me to lie to you and say whatever. Not at all. Is that I can do what I can't do. Not, not yeah. at all, John. I would never expect, and I don't think you ever would, and I don't think you lied to us that night when you told us that one plus two was a complete impossibility, and you wouldn't do it, and that you would have to go on record inside this borough and outside this borough by saying that it was a decision that couldn't be backed by the director or any of the senior management team. For the rest of the time that I'm on this council, I'm going to hit this one real hard about being a lay member. So any crap decision that I'm involved in, every time I stick my hand up when it's total and utter nonsense, I can actually fall back and say, well, at the end of the day, I'm a telephone engineer. <laughs> and I'm going to use it as an excuse. I didn't want to because I thought I, thought I had some credibility about this place. And now I feel that I've lost it. And this was the re reference chair to being hung out to dry. I don't get hung out to dry often, chair. I'll tell you that. I would say terminate it now and let the policy review come back with what they've found. Well, thank you for that uh, contribution in all aspects, really, James. Thank you, Chair. Can I formally move then, Chair, then, that the decision that was taken by this Labour Group on the 10th of October um, to instruct the director to look at a structure <coughs> of a, a director plus two is, um, is rescinded and that the um, decisions upon the senior management structure of social services um, shall be within the remit of the policy review to come back and report. Do I hear any, uh, anyone else supporting no, that? Uh, I, I'm not sure what the composition of that meeting was, Chair, and whether you need to talk to the people who made the decision.
we're not making a decision on as it stands, Jim. So, yeah, I, mean, three, I, I understand the confusion. The three, people, the three people that voted for it are actually here. I mean, four, the four people that voted for it are here. Oh. And I would most certainly like to actually get it, you know, just to get it rescinded. <coughs> I would like to dump it and dump it now. We've taken a decision this evening to, to use the policy review for the structure to evolve out of or to be evolved from. That decision could be circulated round to the department, which would actually, without whether or not the words, the last one was rescinded or not, it would be obvious that the Labour group has now decided that it will actually take its decision on the structure from the policy review. I would welcome a discussion of this with our officers at some stage. I, I would, would say that. Um, I think the, the word on the street, for instance, is that we're cutting the care to the community team. Um, the word on the street is all sorts of things which I am deeply concerned about. And most of that comes out from members or from officers and we have to handle it all the time. If we start reacting to one particular word on the street, um, totally false. If there's any suggestion on the street that we've given senior officers their cards, then we know it's wrong and we can all say it's wrong when we hear it. Because it's wrong, it's dead wrong. Reducing the number of staff required at the senior management team is on our agenda. And I don't want to go back giving messages that it's no longer on our agenda. There has got to be some sort of communication that actually goes out, that actually clarifies where we are at the moment. That's a management and yeah. well, issue. Director but the director can do that. Maybe that's an issue that we can talk outside of here. Jim, are you willing? Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, because we're Can't running over time and we must we must be chair. Because you, the group has made taken a vote which was clear and unequivocal. How can you now turn around and say that it's a management issue? The manager can't go against that decision. Now, what I'm saying in terms of communicationism, can, yeah. can, can I just say sorry? I, I mean, this is actually getting bizarre, particularly in, in view of the time. And 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 I also think it's bizarre in terms of the of the circus that's going on. On here. We have made a clear decision this evening. Okay. If you want, it, if I'm sorry, if no, I'm I'm sorry if, if I'm so, I need to stop you there because the time is on and there is another what meeting. Have we made? Well, 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 I'm asking you, as the chair of this group, that the decision. You know, I'm saying that we reject Jim's uh, decision in relation to rescinding the last uh, decision that we took at, uh, at the uh, <laughs> social services. No, Labour, that was raised. But that obviously we have stated that we wish to take this paper to the policy review where we would discuss this particular issue. And clearly whatever we come, out, come up with there in relation to the structure or the way that the service delivery is a matter that that policy review will look at. So the decision is that the structure of the department will come out of the policy review having, having discussed this the director's paper. presented to the review. So no uh, decision has been made yet on the structure of the department. Yes. Well that's helpful. Correct. At least then that can be... So can that, can be, can that be communicated? And that can be... Can yeah. yeah. us jointly communicate that to the... the I, I certainly will. I certainly will. Thanks very much. That's okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. <laughs> we had a team meeting on Monday and we were told that so many ADs were being, I don't know, whatever, redeployed, sort of deleted, whatever, and then no mention of, of anything else. And then on Wednesday, wham, we've lost 16 team clerks and AD positions have been deferred. Must be the majority women in fairly low paid sort of employment compared to the ADs, you know. There's 16 posts, not just three. Did you actually sit, sit down and think about what the implications are going to be taking away the team clerks, where it's going to leave the teams, the districts, no. without the extra admin support? No. It's absolutely clear that the team admin officers can't just absorb the work that the team <laughs> clerks do. That's abs obvious. Some of the admin is statutory admin work, isn't it? Th there's reviews, there's all the new legislation with the Children Act, there's all the new forms. There hasn't, it would seem, been any negotiation with the union, with the unions, both sets of unions, New and Nago, about the redundancies of the team clerks, and I would have thought mm. that that would have been stage one. Presumably, <coughs> the team clerks have got the option of taking the three months' notice and going... <coughs> Well, I mean, who knows when we get our redundancy notice, it's possibly tomorrow. What happens is a stopgap arrangement until the policy review starts in April? I mean, presumably the officers who recommended it to the councillors said, team clerks do this, this and this and this. We think that these functions can no longer be covered by admin, so therefore social workers will have to take this. I mean, who's going to pay the foster parents? Who's going to do that sort of work? I mean, presumably that's all been looked at.
And it also seems convenient at the same time assistant directors got their jobs back. Mm. And it seems like the money was the, had to be made for them is just made on the team clerk. <laughs> Are you, are, you to, are you trying to prevent me getting No, I just want to have a little chat. Is that all right? Can I have a little chat with you? can have a little chat, but I don't like people who actually forcibly stop me I'm the not chat. forcing you. Yes, you are, because you're, you're blocking the door. Yes, and you are forcing no. people out of jobs. Look, you stepped in front of me. You I are, don't mind talking to you, yeah, but right, I won't have, have it chat. this way. Why are you forcing people out I'm of jobs? I'm not forcing people out of jobs. Who are they? The government, dear, the government. I don't believe that one bit. So we're going to be left with an admin officer who's expected to do both jobs. I mean, I'm, I don't support that. I mean, I've argued against the cuts all along. When, when did you find out about this? Jim Clark was told on Wednesday. And, and when are they due to? As far as we know, the decision's being taken tonight. <laughs> Ah, this is something interesting. This is a. <laughs> Making this presentation tonight, really, because of the urgency of the situation with the imminent deletion of the 16 team clerk posts within our department. We felt it was necessary to speak at this meeting and hope that you would consider our case worthy of discussion. We've been informed that this decision is purely financial and the implications appear not to have been discussed. When I started in 1980, we had one director, one assistant. We've now got one director, one deputy and four assistants. How can they justify that? Can I move from the chair that we agree or ratify, I think is technically, all the options in paragraph 5.2 which have already been to PNR committee last week. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. That concludes the meeting. Um, thank you for your attendance. I've never lost so many friends in such a short period of time. I think it's been apparent to admin people in the division for a long time that these cuts have to come because they themselves could see the reduction mm. in teams. But of course, when it happens, it happens it's, never it's never the right time and people will always be distressed. And it appears that the decision has made, been made in complete haste. Mm. I go back to my original um, point. There was no consultation. Yeah. I mean, why were the district point? admin managers, our line managers, why were they not consulted? The they were told the day before. The district admin managers have been consulted um, over a long period about That's district admin. They said they were not. Certainly and they've been consulted consulted. over time about district admin services, which is what I said. This was sneaked well, through, Kath. There was no way of getting around it. It was sneaked through. Oh, come on. Like, people that's ask us lobby. how it feels from where we are standing. It feels that this has all been done behind our back. People on the lobby were asked this week, why are you here? Why didn't you come to the Policy and Resources Committee? That was the one that basically makes the decisions. Tonight's Social <coughs> Services Urgency Sub was basically rubber stamping. The reason there wasn't a lobby at the policy and resources was because no, nobody no. knew. We've got to try and have some sort of reasonable debate about it just so you can get the information that we can give you. Now I don't know which bits are which yet, but that's the reality of what we're doing right across the board. I'm not trying to convince any of you that what we're doing is taking away things that are unnecessary. I we're saying we're having to make changes and do things that are more necessary now and not do things, some things that are less necessary. Most people here will not be leaving this week. There will be a certain amount of time to work out these new systems. It will also mean other people having to shift in relation to the things they do. Are you suggesting that whilst we're waiting for our redeployment, we sit in our offices and do scale for work setting up new systems for you? Oh, come on. Maybe what you're required to do. Well, yes. We've been told for years we're so-called valued members of staff, a part of a social work team, and now we're expected to spend it. And the basic and fundamental fact is we're funded with less money than we ever were before, and there's got to be some changes somewhere. Well, certainly as a resident of this borough, had a pride in working. I have chosen the option of early retirement because I felt forced. I didn't fancy hanging around for three months and then goodbye now, off you go on compulsory redundancy. I didn't want to go, 
and I am devastated about going and I had a pride and an honour in working for Lewisham and the people of Lewisham. I miss the public more than a lot of other people, but there you go. You didn't want to lose, you couldn't survive without your four ADs and then suddenly we're called 16 posts gone and we said, any of the ADs going with us? Oh no. A feeling you went for lower grades. But not only will you lose the experience that we've got, but if the two IOs and the social workers and the clinical assistants that are left in the district have got any sense, they can look at our treatment and think, I'm not doing this, I'll go and work for a conservative borough. Yeah. Okay, I used to think they treated staff appallingly. Mm -hmm. At least they were honest about it. Lewish and pretend they've got core values and treat that staff mm -hmm. like dirt. <coughs> Thank you for your time anyway. I'll give you a ring tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. well, we might have to use the backup. You know, the well, radio yeah, yeah, stuff. I mean, the thing is, the girls know how to use the portable phones. How about going to the EDT ones? Hello. Hello. Tell you how to do that. Fine. I'm going to show you outside, actually, eh? Sorry, I'm just going to wait for the right moment. Yes. Right. I think it's 20 past, so shall I hand it to you? Yes, fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you want to... Have you got a letter for Councillor Gonzalez as well? That's all I was instructed to do, was to give you that letter. Right, okay. Do you give the result? Nope. Oh, right. I'll pick one bigger than you, then, if it's not the right result. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there's one for me, oh, right. to, uh, the leader. Fine, OK. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll just do out the window if it's the wrong result. <laughs> ah, that's great. Isn't it? Yeah. Successful? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got yeah. it, mate. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Very good. Great. Yeah. Well done. Can you tell Lucy? I thought that went down. Got it. We done it! Got it. Woo! Great. Great. Have we got okay. letters? Yeah. What did he say? Never mind. Wonderful. Woo -hoo. Wonderful. Excitement all around at the moment. <laughs> it's really pleasing. It means we can pursue with all the plans we have for Deptford now, with a bit of space, really. Two London councils are among the winners in a competition for government cash for inner city regeneration. Tower Hamlets and Lewisham get a share of £82 million in the first year of a five-year scheme. Three. Three. Somebody, yeah. Lewisham and some... I can't yes. remember which one's oh, the... Oh, yes, have many envelopes like this time. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, Terry, I never want to see you again <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning. I can tell you now, with absolute <laughs> honesty. <laughs> this is not a lack of loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I say seven o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning? Oh, I did. I'm just right. very impressed right. with the way everyone's... Get you know, test, pulled together and taken initiatives and bashed me around when I'm getting too difficult. I think it's been very, very good. Did you see the other bids? Uh, Lucy showed me quite a few of them last night. Anyone who was really interested, I have to be honest with you, anyone who was really interested was Middlesbrough. <laughs> <laughs> I was very impressed with Stockton's and Sunderland's and we didn't get chosen. <laughs> Next week, the beleaguered education department fights back. I am getting quite concerned about the atmosphere in Lewisham Council at the moment. And the council look for a school for Christopher, a boy with a very special need. Well, if you'd like to find out more about the way local government operates, please send a cheque for £3.50 made payable to BBC Television to Town Hall Guide, BBC Television, London W12 7RJ. <laughs>